Hello folks. Okay, so I want to give a quick uh, shop update and then cover some other subjects. I wrote them down. So I want to talk about uh, the water pump update. Let's talk about taxes for a minute. Cattle brands and maybe what's coming up in future videos. So I've been pretty busy lately. Haven't really been able to make any videos. Um, a lot of stuff is going on, you know, it's springtime, even though, you know, it's really cold here right now. Uh, we had some warm weather. We were up almost 70 degrees. And now we're back down into the 20s and 30s. And uh, it's 37 outside right now. So, you know, it's early spring and this part of the country is big fluctuations this time of year. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> you probably notice that there's something different around the forge. I put this metal up. I've been meaning to do this for a long time. I just hadn't gotten around to it until uh, this week. I had the metal and I just been so busy doing other stuff. But I decided to go ahead and get that cut and put this metal up to, you know, make it a little bit more fi uh, fireproof against that wooden wall, you know. And it adds an extra layer of protection from, you know, sparks and stuff from the coal hitting the wood and stuff like that. So um, I've always put metal up like that around all my forges in every shop that I've ever had. And remember, this is my fifth blacksmith shop in 30 years, and I've never had a fire ever. You know, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty safe when it comes to that kind of stuff. Uh, the forge, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about building a brick or a stone forge with, of course, the, the same fire pot in the center. And this, this is a forge that I made. Oh gosh, probably 20 years ago now, and it's been an excellent forge. It really has. Uh, the The plate in the bottom is a quarter inch steel plate, and then I cut a hole in the center for the fire pot to fit in. And it's just welded together out of angle iron, and real simple, real easy to make. And um, one of these days we'll cover that because you know that seems to be a big hang up with a lot of people that want to get into blacksmithing is the coal forge, and it's really not as hard as you might think. If you have any kind of welding skills, if you have the tools to cut a hole in the center of a, of a plate, then all you've got to do is just go buy your material, cut it to length, weld it together, and, you know, in just a couple of hours, you can have yourself a forge. <clears throat> the, the fire pot, these are not cheap anymore. This is a Centaur Forge fire pot. And I looked them up recently, not that I need one because this one's still in excellent shape. But you know, they're between five and six hundred bucks now, which is just blows me away. It's just astounding how, how much uh, stuff costs these days. So that, that's going to be your biggest expense, uh, even though steel is going up now too. But uh, your biggest expense is going to be that fire pot. But the actual making of a coal forge is really not that difficult. Now, if I make one out of stone, that's going to be a that's going to be a different story. You know, there's there's a lot more work into that. I mean, after I after I cut all my pieces to length, I had this welded up in like a half hour. I mean, it's not really that much welding. And then uh, I cut a hole in the center of a plate. I had the plate already pre-cut with a shear at the metal place that I bought it from, <clears throat> and all I had to do was cut a hole in the center. Then I just slapped it in there, put the, put the fire pot in there, hooked up the blower, and boom, you're in business, you know? So uh, anyway, I'm, I'm really thinking about making one out of brick or out of rock. I'm, I'm seriously considering that. Not that this is doing badly. It's been uh, an excellent forge, and it, it works very well. Uh, it's just, you know, I kind of like that old-time fashioned look of a brick or or stone uh, forge. I've always kind of wanted one, you know. 
So anyway, um, and it, uh, elsewhere in the shop, I just been I'm still unpacking and putting stuff in this shop. It's been ongoing for two years, you know, trying to get the shop right to where I want it because I got I've got projects coming up, you know, and yeah, I've been so busy around the ranch and doing other stuff that I have to <clears throat> divide my time between animals and taking care of the property and fences and gates and then working in the shop and doing other stuff so it's it's always something you know so i, I get out here when I, uh, when I can <clears throat> let's see the water pump the water pump uh i for those of you that have watched my previous video on that stupid champion water pump uh, i i found that burr <clears throat> on the crankshaft i took it off uh, I put, you know, the pump all back together with the new parts, and it worked great. Uh, worked better than it did brand new. Well, brand new, if you remember right, it didn't work at all. Right out of the box, brand new, it didn't work, and I had to rebuild it. And I ended up rebuilding that pump four times. Well, well, they sent me all the, the pump stuff, you know, the, the casing and all the internals, and I put it all together, and it works like brand new. It works fantastic. So it just goes to show you that there was really something wrong with uh, with the pump itself right right from the factory. And I still haven't really determined the cause. And to be honest, I don't care. I just need the darn thing to work. And now it works. So, um, and it's pumping water. How long it'll last, I don't know. Because like I said in my previous video, if this thing fails again in the future, I'm trashing it and I'm buying a Honda. But for now, it's pumping great. I've used it twice since I rebuilt it. I've pumped, I don't know, about 900 gallons of water with it, uh, and it's working perfect. Let's see, uh, <clears throat> one of the reasons why I haven't made a video in the past week or two is, uh, you know, there's so much going on here at spring, and I've been busy working, uh, you know, around the ranch trying to get stuff done, and uh, also it's tax season, and I always put my taxes off till the last moment. I just hate doing them. I hate the way our system is set up. It's overly complicated and it sucks, especially when you own property and all this kind of stuff. And I actually have a professional help in me. And I usually try to stru structure my taxes. And to some people, this might sound kind of odd because, you know, everybody has their own methodology, I guess. but. Um, I structure my taxes to where either I owe just a little bit or I get back just a little bit. And uh, I try to balance it out to net zero, you know what I mean? So that I don't owe a tremendous amount or I'm not getting back a tremendous amount. The reason why I do that is I like to keep as much as I money, uh, of my money during the year as I can. <clears throat> not letting the government suck that money away from me and then giving me part of it back, you know. Uh, after I file taxes and so and that's one of the reasons why I wait till the last moment I I always file on time I uh, I always have done my taxes you know you got to do them but I usually do them and get them submitted about the first week of April and so that's just me I hate doing them I hate the IRS but you got to do it right so this year I actually get a little bit of money back, just a little bit, not much. And last year I owed just a little bit. So um, matter of fact, what's kind of funny is I'm getting back this year almost the same amount as what I owed last year. I don't know how that worked out, but it's really not that much. We're talking hundreds of dollars here. We're not talking thousands. We're talking you know way less than a thousand bucks because I. I balance that out to where it comes pretty close to net zero. And uh, <clears throat> and I'm usually pretty close every year, either owing just a little or getting back just a little. And so far over my lifetime, it's been pretty successful doing it that way. It, that might not be for some people. Some people might like to pay more and then get a big check back, you know, um, every year. And some people owe a bunch every year. I don't know. I, I don't recommend that. I recommend uh, 
you know, making sure you get money back or you're, you're doing what I'm doing and pretty close to net zero. For me, it just makes life easier. Anyway, uh, let's see. Cattle brand. Okay, I'm working on a cattle brand for, for a local ranch. And I'm not sure, but I, I believe these people might be new ranchers. New, new to the ranching profession, I guess you would say. And they contacted me and they need a cattle brand made. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to make their cattle brand. I'm working on it. And I'll switch the camera around here in a minute and show you what I've done so far. But I just want to say a couple things about cattle brands. <clears throat> if you... And this is to all the ranchers out there, to the to the new ones. If you're going to have a brand made, I suggest before you register that brand with like your state agricultural department, I suggest you work with the person that's going to make that brand. Um, because there's certain requirements that need to be met. For number one, once you register that brand with your state agricultural department, you can't change it. And if you start getting overcomplicated with your design, um, it's going to make the brand unruly to actually use in branding cattle. It'll either be too big or it's going to smear. Um, like the state I'm in, they recommend that you use 3 8 material for the letters or for the design so that it's nice and clear when you brand. And with a spacing requirement of 3 quarters to 1 inch. So if you, if you have this big gaudy design and you have to space all that stuff 3 quarters to 1 inch apart, all of a sudden your brand starts getting huge and, and it's too big to brand the cattle with. And that's the case here with the brand I'm working on. So they sent me the design and it had already been approved, which amazes me. I'm just shocked that the Department of Agricultural, Agriculture um, approved this brand. They should have known that this brand is not going to work on cattle, um, especially with the spacing requirements and everything involved. And a lot of ranches have their brand denied their design several times on, over. I know one ranch where his design was disapproved 18 times in a row before they finally, before he designed one where the Department of Agriculture approved of it. But this one got approved, which is astounding to me because there's no way to shrink what they have down small enough to make it viable as a brand. And I called him up and I told him that. And partway through the conversation with these people, the, I think the light bulb turned on and they realized what I was talking about because they had all of the requirements right in front of them. And they finally said, oh, oh, I see what you mean. And so I says, well, what do you want to do? You know, because this brand is going to be huge. It's going to be over six inches long and over five inches wide. And uh, they said, well, make it anyway. Maybe we'll just use it as a wall hanger or for branding wood. And I says, well, it'll work for branding wood, but man, it would make one huge cattle brand for a cow um, because it's going to take up such a large surface area. And I think it's going to be unwieldy because, you know, you kind of have to roll those and you have to be careful not to smear them. And, you know, you have to be careful with a cattle brand. Um, it's not as easy as what you think it is, um, especially when you got cows flailing around, you know, whether you're using a head gate or you're putting them on the ground, you know, um, with, a, with a cattle brand this big, it's just, uh, it's not very good. Well, they want me to make it anyway, and they're willing to pay me good money to do it. So, hey, that's great, you know. So, onward and forward, that's what, that's, uh, that's what I'm going to do. So, I'll, uh, I'll show you this design and uh, show you why 
why it's just not a very viable brand for cattle. And, oh, by the way, I got a couple of brands here. Uh, this one says US on it. Now, I didn't make these two brands. These are a couple that I dug up um, that I have around. This one was in the barn. This one is for sheep. And this one is for tourists. It's not really, I mean, it, it can be used on cows. It's, it just says US on it. And another thing about making a brand is, is when you make a brand, the person making the brand, they have to think upside down and backwards. So uh, you're, you're seeing everything backwards on here. But when you look at it from this direction, it says US on it, from that direction. So when you're putting everything together, you gotta think of it as looking at it from the handle side. So anyway, this brand is actually not mine. This is one that I borrowed from a local ranch and it was never used on cattle. It was <clears throat> used to brand wood. They do have a cattle brand that they have, but this one was made uh, more for fun. But they made it to the requirements of this state. It's 3 8 material. It's about one inch spacing on the letters. And it's a real simple, Average size, the letters are about three and a half inches tall. And that's about normal, anywhere from about two and a half, three and a half inches tall. And the lettering is about right. And uh, so this one's on the larger size, but it's still just about right for cows. And uh, anyway, I just thought I'd show you those. And then recently I've been welding up some blanks for future project. This is a handle. It's not finished, it's still in rough form, but I just welded it up here yesterday for uh, a blank to eventually go on to a fire poker. Made a, made a hook here. A nice basket handle, it's all welded together. And, uh, and then when the time comes to make a fire poker, I'll, uh, I'll uh, forge weld on the rest of the fire poker onto this handle. Actually, I have a fire poker here that's uh, almost complete that I'm working on. Here, let me get it for you. So this fire poker I welded up here recently. It's not, it's not finished. I still have to to uh, cut a, uh, a line in the center on all four sides. Chisel a, a groove in there, basically. And then once the groove is chiseled, I don't know, about six, eight inches long. I think this is about eight inches long. Then I'll twist this and I'll put some decoration on both ends of the twist. And then I've got to clean it up. It's just in rough form. It's just been uh, welded together. So, you know, it's all, it hasn't been cleaned up and wire wheeled or any of that kind of stuff. But it is forged welded together. And, uh, yeah, all I got to do is just do a twist. You can see how the handle is forge welded on. I still have to clean that up a bit. I haven't cleaned it up and, you know, uh, forged it down to size yet. I'm still working on that, or I will be working on that. Just ran out of time. I just forged welded everything together and then uh, set it aside to go do other stuff. But, but you can see what I'm doing here. And I'll do a video on that someday and show you how all that's done. So anyway, uh, I will adjust the camera real quick and uh, over to my bench and show you what I'm talking about with these kettle brands and why it's important to talk to a kettle brand, a blacksmith or whoever's going to make your kettle brand before you design it or in the design process so that you can make it to the right size and not make it too overly large. I'll be right back with you. Okay, folks, so here's the, the brand that I'm working on. The ranch wanted a D and an S. 
with a cross in the center. And as you can see, it's, it's 3 eighths material here. Hopefully you can see this okay. So that's uh, 3 eighths material. And none, none of this is welded together yet, by the way. And I've got the spacing about 3 quarters of an inch, which is the lowest I can go per the requirements. And uh, of course, once the cross gets welded together, then I got to file quarter inch grooves in there. So to prevent smearing. And this is a six inch rule here. And you can see it's uh, six inches long. Now here's one of the problems. So it's got to be made out of three eighths material. That's in the design requirement that was submitted to the Department of Agriculture. Okay, well, most letters on a cattle brand are 22 and a half, three inches long. I shrunk this down. I shrunk these letters down to about two inches. That's about as small as I can go on this three eighths material and still get it to bend right. You know, I mean, you, you go you go much smaller than two inches on the lettering. For one, the letters will be really tiny and it, it'll be just difficult as hell to, to make letters out of them with, with such large material using three eighths. <clears throat> and, uh, and then you got to think about your spacing requirements. So, you know, it's it's not a very viable design. It really isn't. It, it just makes life really difficult because, as you can see, this 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 brand is already at six inches long, keeping it about as small as I possibly can. I mean, I can I can try to bend this up using one inch letters, but I, you know, I don't think it's going to work. Uh, you know, it was already difficult enough to bend that S and to bend this part of the D um, being at two inches. Well, the D wasn't too difficult. The S was getting a little difficult on two inch material. You know, you're only talking material. Well, the, the total letter size is two inch. I cut a piece of stock about three inch, but that's that's only three inches. And and try try to hold on to that with a pair of tongs out of a forge and and to uh, and to make you know uh a decent looking S, you know, it's difficult enough with, with that size, you know, material. Now if I were to shrink that down to an inch an inch or inch and a half, it'd be dang near impossible. And it would just be really small, you know, and uh that doesn't make for a good cattle brand. It really doesn't. <clears throat> now, I left, I cut grooves in here and I put these together. And uh, I left them proud for a reason. Because I'm going to forge weld that. And after I forge weld that together, um, when I hammer right here, it's going to basically forge and squish all that together. And when I get done, it'll be three eighths in thickness right where I want it. This D, I, uh, I already kind of ground around here and I'm going to weld it there. And then I'll, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of too small really to forge weld, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, weld that together and, grind it down, heat it up, and when I get done, you won't even know it's there. But even there, where it's welded, I got to file a quarter inch groove per the requirements that were submitted to the Department of Agriculture. I've got to uh, file the groove there where the connecting pieces are. That's a requirement, and that helps to keep it from smearing uh, and keeping it from looking right when you brand the cow. But man, that's uh that's a six inch long by five inch wide kettle brand, and it's uh it's just too big, you know. Um especially lengthwise. Now, if they would have done something like maybe put a D and an S together, they could have even had them offset a little bit, or with maybe a circle around it, or something like that to compact that and make it smaller, that would have been ideal. But 
they wanted it in this cross formation and uh, not realizing until after I talked to him just how massive that brand is. And, you know, I did, I did my research. I've made brands before. This isn't my first go around with a brand, but I've never made a brand this big, you know, in, in, in this format. It's, it's just different. I've never even seen a brand like that, not used for cattle anyway. Um, but I've made regular size brands and I've made real long brands for woodworkers that had all kinds of letters, you know. I've made all different kinds of brands like that, but never one like this for using on cattle. And I just don't think it's going to work on cattle. Well, I've called around. I did some research. I talked to quite a few ranches. I talked to a guy in Arizona that makes cattle brands for a living and uh, sent him the design. And he said the same thing. It's just too big. It's not going to work. Uh, basically confirming what I already knew. Um, but I wanted to get a consensus on it, but um, what do you do, right? But I'm going to weld this all up today, and then I'm going to start working on the handle for it and and uh, give it to him, I guess, here next week. I told him I'd have it done next week, so it's not really a complicated thing, you know. It's not hard to make a brand, really, but, you know... People that need brands made for ranches, they need to work with their blacksmith or their uh, whoever's making it, their metal guy, to uh, to help them design it so that they can uh, make something that's not large and unwieldy, you know, because they've got to remember that they want to use this on a, on a live animal. <laughs> so anyway, that's all I have this week, folks. Talk to you later.